everybody, Dr. Danielle Ward here. I still haven't made it home, but I promised you guys I would start my educational series on plastic surgery because I realized that there is a lot that the outside public does not know about plastic surgery, whereas they think that we're all just all cosmetic, breast augmentations, tummy tucks. So I wanted to do a small series to kind of go into the deeper aspects of plastic surgery, offer a little education, and hopefully you guys will come to appreciate my world a little bit more. So today we are going to discuss flaps. A huge part of what we do in plastic surgery are flaps. We're moving tissues around into different places, so you always hear flap this, flap that, but what exactly is a flap? Well, a flap is a unit of tissue that maintains its own blood supply from its origin, and what we call this is its donor site, while being transferred to a different location, which we refer to as a recipient site. What makes this possible is vascularity. This is basically the blood vessels that give life to the tissue in question. The skin and the muscles are made up of a very intricate and complex supply of blood vessels that penetrate through the skin, muscles, fascia to actually give life to these tissues. So sometimes in medical lingo, you might hear something like perforator flap, where, where the vessel can be either direct, where it pierces through the fascia before going through to supply the muscle, or indirect, where it goes through the muscle first before piercing the fascia. Hmm. Hmm. And what exactly is a fascia? It is basically just a deep layer of connective tissue that keeps everything in your body intact. So if you've ever had any opportunity to witness a surgery, whether you watch it on YouTube or you've seen it in real life, you'll oftentimes see this very thin sheet that when you're going through, it just kind of lifts through. That is what we refer to as the fascia. It looks thin and delicate, but it is super strong and it is holding everything in your body together right now as we go through this video. Ring-a-ding-ding! -ding. Actually, a ton of flaps out there, whether it's like venous, fascial cutaneous, adipose fascial, I mean, the list goes on, but I'm really going to try to keep this video simple just for the general public. So all you plastic surgeons out there, plastic surgery residents, please don't come for me. This is just meant to be fun, quick, and educational. What flaps do we commonly use in plastic surgery? Well, I'd have to say that we use muscle and myocutaneous flaps often. We use these in everything from breast reconstruction, head and neck reconstruction, pressure sores, just any type of general reconstruction. So I'll briefly try to go over those in this, but like I said, this is just brushing the surface of what we do. And speaking on different types of flaps, one thing that we were tested on often, especially every year on our plastic surgery in-service exam, are the Matthews and High type flaps. Please don't come at me if I mispronounce this, but basically these are flaps that are described based on their vascularity in the pedicles. So you have five different types. So you have type one, and this is based on one major dominant vascular pedicle. You have type two, which is based on dominant pedicles as well as minor pedicles. And then you have type three, which typically has two dominant pedicles. And then you have type four, which are segmental vascular pedicles. And then lastly, you have type five, where you have one dominant vascular pedicle as well as multiple secondary segmental pedicles. And just to give you an example, this week we have done a lot of pectoralis major um, type flaps. That's your muscle that's here. Um, and this is actually a Matthews and Nahai type five flap. So just to break this down for you, the pectoralis major muscle does not just have one blood supply. It's major blood supply, which we would refer to as the dominant one, is from the thoracoacromial artery, but then it does have the secondary segmental perforators, which come from the lateral thoracic artery, as well as the internal 
mammary artery perforators. So that is what makes this a Matthews and the high type five flat because it has the dominant, but then it has the segmental blood supply. And when it comes to the Matthews and the high classifications of flaps, there's actually a mnemonic that we use to help us remember this. So it is 10 gracious glutes sit on latrines. So for type one, that's typically going to be the tensor fascia lata flap, that's 10. Um, for type two, the gracilis flap, uh, gracious on that part. For type three, glutes goes with gluteus maximus. Um, type four is sit, so that goes more with satorius, or you could say sat on latrines to make that easier. And then for type five, you have latrines, which goes with latissimus dorsi. And then we add in the muscles as we go. So I, I know it as latrines, but then I also know like a pectoralis major fits in a type five. And as we go through the training and do more of the procedures, we kind of know which ones to add and how to classify them. So that's just a little something for, you know, in the training, 10 gracious, gracious glutes sit on latrines. I hope you get at least one question right on the end service. And then not all flaps are just muscle and skin. There are a variety of flaps. So you have things like a bone flap, which you can take from your fibula, which is the bone in your lower leg. And we actually use that to reconstruct the jaw. And then there's flaps like this row, which is the omentum. It's this big yellow covering over your abdomen that protects things in place, but we can actually use that to make different flaps as well. And then you have composite flaps. We do a lot of times with, sometimes with, I think I did one with a nose reconstruction where we took uh, ear composite. So composite means it contains the skin, the cartilage, uh, the vessels, all the tissue that's needed. You just take that and then you put that right in. So that's what makes that a composite flap. So Flaps aren't limited to just muscle. It can be bone, it can be um, visceral, it can be a lot of things, which is why I'm keeping this short and simple. An important question is, how do you move these flaps? How do you keep them in place? How do you keep them alive? And the most important thing is maintaining that blood supply. So I just read about this great analogy about lamps. So you have a lamp in a room, and you move it around the room, but it's still plugged in. So that vessel is still connected, but you're moving it around. That's a type of, you know, transposition type flap. Whereas if you unplug it and you move it around and connect it somewhere else, then that would be what we call a free flap. So just to give some ideas of different types of flaps we do, there is the rectangular flap, and I'm going to try to make sure I have pictures here so I'll say there is the rectangular flap where you create a rectangle it's still connected to the blood supply you typically have the defect or the lesion um, above it and then you just move that tissue up so it's just stretching that tissue same thing with what we have as we call a V to Y you might have a large lesion and you just make a V um, in line and then you move it up so it is now a uh, B to Y flap. Other types are rotation. This is a semicircular, so you might have a small defect and you create a circle and then you actually pull that skin over. So you're just rotating the skin, but it's still connected to its blood supply. And then transposition flap is when you just kind of rotate that tissue over laterally, or you'll have a pivot point with that as well. Then there's Z-plasties, we use those a lot for scars, um, a lot of times on the hand because you can't just sew a straight line, it would cause contractures, so we tend to do Z-plasties that way. And then there's rhomboid flaps, and I'm gonna make sure I have pictures <laughs> up for everyone. And then interpolation, which would be our island flaps that we do. And for the interpolation, this is typically where it's near but not as close, like on a finger. So that's what it means by interpolation. So what are some common challenges that we see with flaps? Well, the major thing is keeping that flap's blood supply. So sometimes you might see what we call clogging, or in medical terms, you might have venous congestion. 
So ways that we look for that, we use things in OR like um, spies, which can show, like it's fluorescent and it can show if the tissue is viable or not before you even suture it or put it into place because a lot of times if there's no good blood flow, that tissue will die and you'll get um, just black necrotic and it just the flap won't survive. There's other things where a lot of times it's just physical examination. You're going to look at the tissue, you're looking to make sure that it's not purple and blotty and congested and sometimes this could be a vessel is kinked where you might have to take back to the OR um, with congestion. Sometimes we use leeches <laughs> where that actually helps um, leeches secrete a substance that actually thins out the blood as an anticoagulant gets things flowing smoothly. So if you're ever seeing leeches in the hospital, that is why we're using it. Um, and then we do things like, you know, there's pulse oximeters that can watch the blood flow for you, but we're constantly watching these flaps to make sure they survive. And we're never afraid to take these back to the operating room and fix them again. So flaps uh, tend to be serious business, especially when you're doing the major flaps. And what are some types of flaps? Well, just to very, very briefly, <laughs> just go into a few off the top of my head. Um, you have the ALT flap, which is the anterior lateral thigh flap so anterior means front lateral means to the side and thigh um, that is a common one that we use a lot I'll make sure I have pictures here for that and then um, the deep flap is the deep inferior epigastric artery flap we use this a lot for breast reconstruction uh, as a free tissue transfer and then another one is propeller flap and keystone flaps. So it's just a very small subset because you can basically create flaps out of anything. Is there a particular flap that I like? Well, I've mentioned it previously, but as a third year medical student, it was a tram flap, transverse rectus abdominis muscle flap that really got me interested and solidified my desire to pursue plastic surgery. You don't see a lot of that now. It's been replaced by the deep inferior epigastric uh, deep flap, but uh, epigastric perforator. Sorry, I had to explain the P part. Um, but you know that was what really did it for me. Another flap that I'm interested in seeing and operating on, but I have never done, is the jejunal free flap. So basically, where we take a part of the intestine and we can actually. Um, reconstruct the esophagus, whether it's uh, pediatric insufficiencies or head and neck cancers. I would love to be a part of that. And the reason why that intrigues me so much is because it's, you know, in the body. A lot of people think that plastic surgeons are just soft tissue and we don't do anything inside the body, but we do a lot. So if you had to ask me, tram flap is my favorite only because that's what got me into it. And then jejunal is what interests me the most. There's also the radial artery forearm flap, which I will likely get to do next month. Um, but yeah, so that's um, where I am with flaps. That's basically the very quick and dirty on flaps and plastic surgery. I hope you guys found this informative and learned a little bit more about what it's like in my world. And if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, just let me know in the comments and please subscribe if you like what you see. And I will try every week or maybe bi-weekly to go into different parts of plastics that you might not have known about so that I can keep you guys educated and you can see why I have such a passion for this specialty. But right now, I hope everyone has an amazing week ahead. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And until next time, guys, bye.